electrons, which are negative, are attracted by the protons, which are positive, and vice versa. Still in 1913, the year of Bohr's publication, a brilliant English physicist called Henry Moseley, who was another student of Rutherford, published work where he described firing X-rays at different elements and observing the spectra that they produced, and he found something interesting. He noticed that the frequency of the X-rays produced followed a very predictable pattern, whereby the square root of the X-ray frequency is proportional to the number of electrons in the atom. A year later, in 1914, Mosley published another paper. Mosley said in this paper that, there is every reason to suppose that the integer which controls the X-ray spectrum is the same as the number of electrical units in the nucleus. In other words, he said that the atomic number is the number of positive charges in the nucleus. This was the first ever hint at the existence of the proton, and it was amazing work, but sadly this would turn out to be the final publication Mosley ever produced. Shortly afterwards, the First World War broke out and Mosley enlisted with the Royal Engineers, where he served as a technical officer. A year later, he was killed at the age of 27 by a sniper at the Battle of Gallipoli. Mosley was a brilliant scientist who Rutherford believed would have gone on to win a Nobel Prize. Isaac Asimov, one of the most famous sci-fi authors of the 20th century, said of Mosley that his death might well have been the most costly single death of the war to mankind generally. Niels Bohr said in an interview years later, The Rutherford work was not taken seriously. We cannot understand it today, but it was not taken seriously at all. There was no mention of it in any place. The great change came from Mosley. It really seems like Mosley would have gone on to be hugely influential in the world of science, but he was unfortunately lost too soon. Rutherford continued along the path that Mosley had started, and several years later he published multiple papers where he described how firing alpha particles through nitrogen resulted in the formation of hydrogen nuclei. Rutherford was able to explain that these hydrogen nuclei must have been knocked out of the nitrogen nuclei by the alpha particles, and so he was able to determine that they were a fundamental building block of the atomic nucleus. Remember about a hundred years before all this when William Prout suggested that all the elements heavier than hydrogen were just clusters of hydrogen atoms, and he gave these fundamental particles the name protyle? Well, Rutherford was inspired by Prout to give a name to the positively charged hydrogen nucleus that he had found inside the nuclei of other elements. Instead of protyle, he gave this particle the name proton, and the name stuck. And with that, the first ever nuclear particle had been identified.